If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. What's a Keith Threshold song? Um, any Rolling Stones song, like, ever. <laughs> paint, paint it black. You know what I mean? Stop looking at me like that. I just thought I'd make it uncomfortable real quick. I want to do that. I don't want to start with that. We're going to start with that, are we? No. Yeah, we're not We're not going to cut that, Justin. That's Fuck. in the episode. That's right. Listen. We get all your bloopers, too. Listen, I can't yell right now, so I'm going to have to say this kind of softly. I can't in, either. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 46 minutes, Adam, Justin, and I do our regular introductory current events. Shenanigans. Conversation. We if start you're off, in the car with kids, make sure you fast forward. I think we got into the drug talk right now. Wow. wow. We talk about my Keith Richards lane. drug use theory. We talk about Adam's drug and genetics theory. Hmm. We talk about our worst drug experiences. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of drugs. Drug, 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 drug. I want to fast forward the first 20 minutes if you don't like drugs. Uh, we talk about the Jersey Shore reboot. Uh, can't wait. We talk about tainted bottle water. This is not water running off Tainted your tank. Tainted water. This is something totally uh, different. Uh, <laughs> we talk about the death of satellite radio, Trump's Space Force, and Moon Base. Yeah. Space Force! Star Wars is here. And the robot hamburger flipper. Then mm. we get into the questions. The first question is, is direct ab work necessary if you do the big heavy lifts like squats and deadlifts? Because, you know... Power lifters like to say, you don't need to work your abs if you squat and deadlift. <laughs> Find out how Sal silly. got incredible abs. Exactly. The next question was, are fruits so handsome. essential? Is it essential to eat fruit? Because they're, you know, they're healthy for you and they taste good. What do we think about fruit? Find out why Justin only eats the hard ones. Yeah. Whoa. I don't like Sal loves to eat bananas in public. The next question was, do women crave uh, more sweets uh, than men? This is a topic we have zero expertise in, but we are going to give our opinion anyway. You'll love this part of the episode. And finally, is it okay to hit on a guy in the gym? Adam gives his expert uh, advice on that part of the episode. Also, this month, get free forum access if you enroll in any of our MAPS bundles. Also, we do mention a lot of ab training in this. I do want to mention we have something called the No BS Six Pack Formula. This is one That's of our- no bullshit, everybody. We barely ever talk about this. This is a program designed just to train your core, just to build out the muscles of your core so that they show. We have other MAPS programs as well, however. If you're interested in just maximum size and strength, well, that's MAPS Anabolic. If you want functional athletic performance, that's MAPS Performance. If you want aesthetics, if you're like a stage presentation athlete, a bikini competitor, bodybuilder, that's MAPS Aesthetic. Or if you like to work out at home without equipment, that's MAPS Anywhere. And finally, if you want correctional exercise te technique or if you're a personal trainer and you want something you can use on your clients, that's the Prime and Prime Pro bundle. And of course, with any bundle, get free access to our forum all month long. For more information, go to mindpumpmedia.com. We all sound like Adam today. Listen, You're not Justin, getting sick too, are you? No, I, I kind of lost my voice when I like screamed and sang at that metal concert. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. When, I, when I get to like certain octaves, I get, like t-shirt time. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm right on par, dude. You are on par. Does that, yeah, mean no, does that mean no singing for you today? Who, me? No, I have to no, defer no. To, to you, brother. Oh, no, but no. You're, you got to carry us Bro, today. this is this is your opportunity. This is the yeah. one chance you're going to get where you it. have the best. It. It's like that Eminem song, dude. How's that go? Uh, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> it like goes in my head and then it's gone. <laughs> yeah. You do the old school rock a lot this better. This is the hey, moment. Why don't I get the fucking- you own it. Why don't, why don't you guys send me the memo about the beanies? What's up with that? Yeah, you're not cool enough to rock yeah, one, you're not. You look like House of Pain. Remember That's House right. of Pain? Yeah. Jump. Jump. And, and Adam looks like he's going to protest the Vietnam War. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like straight up Sergeant Pepper. I don't think you're allowed to comment on fashion. I don't think that's yeah. what you're allowed no. to. No. Well. Wow. Wow. You just I got blocked. I think you're just not allowed to. I think. There's, hey, hold on a second. I think there's certain rules hold for all of us, like I look sports good and fashion. I think you just got to wow. leave alone. I didn't dude. say good or bad. I just wow. made an observation. You just got it blocked. could be good. It could be bad. I'm just saying, historically speaking. You would right now be Actually, saying now no that, to war. Now that we're now that we're plugged in with Viore, I feel yeah. like I feel like your swag game is already. Starting I have to, one shirt. It's starting to yeah. see it. It's already elevating. Dude. That's wear, all it took was one one Viore hoodie. You haven't stopped wearing that hoodie <laughs> because yesterday yeah, I, don't, I keep complimenting. Wait, I, I, I don't want you to though. That's the thing. 
You don't want me to stop wearing it? No, because you know the uh, the other option just isn't as cool. <laughs> to this, yeah. damn dude, this this cold is kicking my ass. What did the doctor say? You went this morning. It's a gnarly one, huh? He said you were a pussy, huh? Yeah, yeah doctor's like, well, he, he wrote a prescription. He's like, here you go, stop being a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some cough medicine. No, he said that. Um, <clears throat> you know, here's the deal: bronchitis, which I may have, m- most times is uh, viral. So you know, you don't want to take antibiotics if you have a virus because doesn't do shit for you right except for mm-hmm. mess up your 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 microbiome so i'm gonna stay i'm gonna st- see what happens here i'm gonna tough it out mm. i'm nope. doing i'm right now i'm on a lot of Soldier drugs though. on here's the thing about western medicine that i love nothing can stop uh symptoms or at least like mask symptoms better like I, i'm on mucinex sudafed <laughs> and advil so you're a nice foggy haze <clears throat> sudafed right is the business man oh dude did you see that thing that katrina sent over to you the the iv place i do that bullshit well you know that that's become like a popular thing right like within like yeah, big you, companies these these yeah people, they hook you up to an iv and give you a bunch of vitamins hydrate you oh god no they hook you up to an iv and they give you vitamins through your blood i bet it we feels, used to do that when we were really i bet hungover. it feels fucking amazing I bet it's bullshit is what I think. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yep. I think there's no, really very few situations where you need IV vitamins. Otherwise, you could just take a vitamin or eat. Like there's no Well, need and feel good are two different things. Like you just you you're going to be fine. Your body's going to be is yeah. going to rebound from where you are right now, but who knows? What if you were to fucking plug into that thing and you just feel like, oh man, that feels so good. Was it Wolf so. of Wall Street where they had like a business of that's, nurses that went around? That's what and they're just, getting. That's that's popular now over here. Yeah. It's popular to do that. Like these companies where these guys work these bell to bell. It's like just like you said, like this hungover feeling. Right. They get plug in the IV and well, that's different. I think if you're dehydrated, yeah, you get an yeah. IV. It's going to hydrate you. Much so you don't think that being sick or that would cause you to be kind of dehydrated? I'm not dehydrated, no way. No, I've been drinking a lot of water. Yeah. Oh, my pee's pretty clear. See, I when I get sick, I have a bad habit. I don't drink enough water. Something I have to actively like do that. I have to go grab have like someone a, has to bring it to you. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go get it, bring it to me, and then I gotta pay attention. You gotta wait for it. You're just uh, not moving. You're laying yeah. around watching 16 and pregnant all day. You don't fucking want water. You, dude, know hey, you don't want anything. I get really horny when I'm sick now. I think you've got in my head with yeah, that shit, dude. See. It's the Sudafed and the sickness because Sudafedrin does that to me too. It makes me wacky. <laughs> you know? It gives you like a like a goofy. Did I say wacky or I say whack off. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you want to know what's embarrassing? Yeah, we were doing do the interview yesterday. This is the worst thing I've ever worst interview I've ever done in my life. We're interviewing a guest, and while he's talking, you know, I'm, I'm put the mic away from my face to cough every once in a while, and I can feel the coughing building up. You ever try to fight a cough? Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Like, it's like trying to fight an orgasm or a sneeze. It's not going to happen. It keeps tickling. Yeah, it's just, dude, it was coming on so hard. I had to push the mic away and I ran out of the room yeah. and I coughed for five minutes straight while you guys uh, were doing yeah. the interview. That's by been yourself. me like the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> How'd you like Luke, man? I thought his story was great, huh? He's yeah, a crazy he's, he's story. Super what cool, a dude. fucking story. How's, on he, that. how's he alive? Right? I know. Eight years old, snorting blow. Yeah, no big deal. <clears throat> crazy. That had to been crazy for you guys because you guys have kids that age. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, like I, I, my mind is still just completely baffled. Actually, by it. actually, it hurts my heart when I hear that. Yeah. Oh, I bet. For real. I mean, I'm being, I'm, I, it hurts mine. I'm. A, I don't have a kid. I couldn't imagine having a kid around that yeah. same age and then hearing someone tell that story and think like, man. And he's very measured and rational human being now. Like, how did that happen? Right, right. You it's, know what I mean? I mean, the odds are all against a guy like that. You, yeah. you, you have a childhood and upbringing like that, and you're uh-huh. doing things at like that young of an age. Like for him to turn his life around, that in itself is a miracle. Well, the greater the challenge, right? The greater the growth. Obviously, it wasn't too much of a challenge for him it didn't kill him so it just made him who he is now although yeah. i think a lot of people would have died i don't oh, think yeah. a lot of people would have survived a life like that either that or just down a down a <clears throat> rabbit hole of like drug seeking forever which i mean he even he admits going down that road for yeah, a very exactly. long time i mean he's it's i mean i don't remember how many years sober he said he was do you remember uh i think he said uh 15 minutes or something no, i'm just kidding it was uh <laughs> i'm joke joking no it was years he's been doing i think since 26 so okay. it's like 20 over 20 years, maybe? That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Because yeah. he's like 47. 47. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks great for a dude who did a lot of drugs. Dude, he looks like, like, he's like, like, like Damn, dude. Well, I have I a theory. Know. I have a theory. <laughs> okay, maybe that. the fountain of youth. Well, yeah. I, have, I have a theory. You so start really early. You'll notice that the celebrities or the musicians that don't die from all their drug abuse, because a few of them do, right? Uh, a few of them don't like die. Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy How Osbourne. the hell is that guy still alive? He started <laughs> or, so early. Yeah. No, no Ozzy Osbourne, well, who's the guy? Uh, Keith Richards. Keith Richards, Richards yeah. Like, why these people aren't dead, and why are they still alive, and why they seem to, like they're thriving? Here's my theory. I think 
Ooh, they kill off all the weak ass cells. That's it. It's like you're doing like yeah. light chemo. Oh, all they have, time. all they have. I think it's badass more, cells. I think it's more like just like we talk about how some people just have the genetics to respond well to like steroids. I think some people just respond well to certain chemicals added to their body, and others don't. It's why too some people They're like gra- a super liver. Well, just some people. You <laughs> notice how everyone kind of gravitates to different poisons, right? Like some people are you know pill poppers and opiate seekers. You have other people that are chasing after marijuana. You have other people that are chasing after alcohol. And they all give your body like a different chemical yeah. response. And some people just have that gene, like everybody in the family, like my Can whole you, fa- What kind of people do you think would be uh, like gravitate towards what type of drug? Do you have a theory on any of that or is it just? Um, mm. No, I don't actually. I think I think that's the genetic com- component. Like, yeah. So I think like in my family, right? So uh, oh. alcohol is not popular. Drugs like cocaine or heroin, not popular. But opiates and pills are extremely popular within my family my cousins my mom my grandmother myself like we've all gone down this road at one at one point so i think you have this gene that it, it just though whatever that drug is it just works really yeah, well in your body and I then think so, so when yeah. rough times happen in your life you kind of tend to gravitate i agree that. because like when you take a vicodin you probably feel different than what because i hate I hate opiates. Oh yeah, Katrina's oh, the same yeah. way too. Gives her nightmares. Yep. She gets stomach aches from it. She's like, it's yep. the worst. She she'll be in like the worst pain ever. And I could have one at the house and be like, hey, do you want a Vicodin or something like that? And she goes, oh god, no, that'll make it worse. Yeah, I avoided it because I I liked it a lot. Yeah. Oh, so you liked it too? Oh yeah, yeah. Because one of my roommates in college, he had broke his leg, and uh, after football games, I would take a Vicodin on a Sunday. You know, when I was like super beat up and sore, and I was like, ooh. This is good. Uh-huh. And so I, yeah, to, like, uh-huh. I just avoided it after that. What does like, it feel like? Because when I take it, I feel nauseous. Just like relaxed I get nightmares. Really? Just relaxed everywhere. Super like chill. Like euphoric. Calm. Yeah, euphoric. Really? I, was, I, I used to Damn. watch just <clears throat> Matrix and Braveheart. But you know, like, now, I, you we say that, right? Because that's the one that... I, I know people that talk about like alcohol that way. They'll be like, oh man, mm-hmm. after I have like five or six beers, I just feel fucking amazing you give me five or six beers i feel <laughs> bloated i'm burping yeah, yeah, i feel yeah. Ugh, heartburn. burn yeah, yeah i'm like this is shit in awful pants. like i get like oh. a little buzz for a little bit it's like a 15 minute i enjoy this the rest of the time i feel like the shit. only the one drug that I, you know i've never really i don't have any experience with it but the one drug i would assume that i would probably like is, is our uppers because i really liked ephedra back in the day like right now i'm on pseudoephedrine oh, yeah. which is essentially ephedra right and i love pseudoephed i take that shit and i'm fucking on top of the world when back in the day when ephedra was legal Man, I used to pop out like candy all the time. Yeah. I was on fire. Yeah, <laughs> loved it. Loved yeah. it. Absolutely loved it. I was as a kid growing up. I was always afraid of things like cocaine and stuff for that exact reason because I was already a high energy person. I loved lot that stuff. Yeah. I loved caffeine. I loved coffee and, yeah. and just like you, I did a fedra uh-huh. a lot. So I stayed away from cocaine for a really really long time because I was afraid that I would like it. I was like, man, if I if I get into this. This could be something that I could see myself wanting to do. So I already knew better. Like, okay, stay away from that drug. Yeah, you're yeah. going to like that drug. I know you're <laughs> going to like that drug. So I think that's what people have to be careful of is like you, the ones that you're, you, you just take it and it's like, oh man, that feels good. I don't know good. if it's necessarily the, the, that it feels good or if it's that you, in your natural state or whatever, you may be under some kind of, like, like your normal life maybe is terrible or you don't like the way you feel or you're anxious uh, or fearful and it, takes that away so then that state of mind is so superior to this terrible you know what i mean I, you, I believe that i believe that some of that is true but i don't believe all that's true i think when you it's part of it yeah i mean just like i mean there's plenty of people that drink beer and are completely happy with their lives and, and they're but it just it feels so good in their body well and you it, know what i mean i'm talking about the addiction uh, aspect of it yeah, you know oh, what I'm yeah. well anytime we're addicted to anything i feel like we're either numbing something or we're running from something else in our yeah. life that we're not handling or we're not facing so Hundred percent, I I think that. But there's also like I think in my case, like so I was already somebody who you know fucked with opiates recreationally as a, in my mid twenties, and you know I I I've always been somebody who's had really good control of whatever it is that I'm messing with, like just because I've seen so much addiction in my life. Yeah. So <clears throat> I remember being introduced to it, and it was like a thing that I was like every other every other weekend or every now and then it was like something we would do when we go out. And the real reason why I used to do it was because I one of course I liked it too. I didn't have to drink a lot. I could go out to the bars with everybody. If I had a Vicodin <clears throat> and if I had one beer on that, and I know we don't advocate doing this, but if you did that, like it feels like I'm wasted without having to drink five or six beers. So yeah. it allowed me as a trainer to go and like kind of party with everybody and feel like I'm a part of everything. Now where you I hit got your macros, you know, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> 
where you know, totally backwards thinking, right? I'm totally like, take, take, take care of my macros and that, Dude, that part you know of what's fucking funny? my body. I know a lot of fitness, uh, a oh, lot yeah. of fitness people that yeah. do drugs instead of drink because of the, there's no calories. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like ew. Oh, I yeah. was, I was, I'm like, not going to drink. I'd rather do heroin. Exactly, I was, yeah. I was, I was for sure somebody who, who had that same thought process was like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to drink seven, eight beers because that led to Jack in the Box later in the night and that led to bad food the next day. And it's so like, I'll tell you guys an experience. So I had a, a buddy who, so back in the, God, let me think here. It had to have been in the early or mid 2000s, like uh, two th- like around 2007, six, something like that. At that time, there were all these gray market chemicals and drugs that you could buy online. And they're gray market because they weren't regulated, but they weren't necessarily approved for human consumption. And it was like this big deal where they're, you know, like, okay, like bath salts. Remember bath salts? Yeah. That's what bath salts were, right? They were, they were drugs that were very close to other drugs like Turn everybody methamphetamines, but they changed it a little bit and then they, you know, and people liked them. So I had a buddy who had bought some online and it was called methalone. I don't know if you guys heard about this. So methalone is very chemically uh, similar to um, uh, MDMA, ecstasy or molly or whatever. So he bought this thing and he capsulate, he put it in capsules and he was a friend of mine. He's like, dude, you got to try this. This, this supplement, he told me it was a supplement. I'm like, what is it? And he's like, oh, you feel mm-hmm. fucking awesome, dude, on it. It's fucking great. So I had no idea what it was. So he's telling me about it, and I'm like, really? It feels, and you know me, I'm a supplement, you know, I don't know what they call whore. me. Yeah, there you go, yeah. supplement whore. So he's Sorry. like, it's a supplement. It feels good. I bought it online. So in my mind, I'm like, sounds cool. So we went to, I don't remember where we went. Well, we went to Santana Rose. So we went to a bar. He's like, here, try this, and you know, just take one. I'm like, okay, cool. So I took it, and I had no idea what it would do. So I took it and we're sitting there hanging out and all of a sudden I felt this like over my whole body. Everything felt warm. I was super happy and I'm looking at him like, man, I'm like, bro, I fucking love you. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're a fucking cool guy. You know that? I mean, he was a friend of mine, but he wasn't that close of a friend of mine. Yeah. Bro, an hour into it, me and him are talking about this business we're going to open. I'm fucking, (laughs) I'm going to sell my gym and go into work with him. We're awesome. We're going to move in. Listen, you can live in my house. I got an extra room. We're like best friends. I'm talking to people, this, that, and the other. And so about maybe four or five hours later, that shit starts to wear off and I start to feel kind of crummy and shitty. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I feel kind of like depressed now. Like, what the hell? So I'm like, what was that stuff you gave me? And he's like, oh, it's called, you know, and I wrote it down and I went home and did some research. That motherfucker gave me like an analog to fucking ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> I was all depressed yeah. the next day and shit because of the uh, fucking hangover or whatever. <laughs> it's like, I don't even like you. But dude, you want to talk about an altered state of consciousness? Like, I remember distinctly when that hit me. I was like, whoa, everybody. Oh, I love everybody. <laughs> I barely knew this guy, dude. I was like sharing all my personal business That's stuff. That's a solid business tactic. <clears throat> yeah. He could have totally closed me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, do you remember the name? Of, the you meeting? remember the name of the? Not that I want to get it or anything. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. That is the name of it. Do you write the show notes. That is the name yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. Met- yeah. Met- yeah. Could you, could you yeah. make sure Jackie gets yeah. that for the show notes, please? Right. So Methal- <laughs> methalone is actually illegal now. Uh, okay. Yeah, because that was one of the like people were taking about raves and shit and, and overdosing and having some bad stuff. Do you out. guys remember your your worst drug experience? Like trying some trying something or somebody giving you something where you just like that was the most awful experience. Oh, no, nothing has been uh-huh. <laughs> weed. Nothing has been worse than having a, that paranoid situation I had with cannabis. It was the most insane, delusional, paranoid time of my entire life. I told you guys about this. Yeah. I was up in Tahoe and I had a just a huge edible. And then I had smoked, and uh, I did. I guess the edible hadn't hit me yet, but yeah. it was really strong. And so you smoked on top of it. So I smoked on top of it, <sighs> I and I can get, <clears throat> I can get anxious anyway. So even with, so here's the deal with with edibles, a small dose is like two to five milligrams. I rarely go over five milligrams. I'm usually around three, which is low, especially for somebody who uses. You know, I use cannabis. I'd probably say five to eight times a month, right? And I've used it for for gut health and stuff like that. And probably around five to eight times a month. So I'm not an, a super regular user, but it's not like I never use it. So, but and five milligrams is a low dose, but for me, that's strong enough. So I had, I think it was like 15 or 20 milligram uh, cookie. And then I smoked and then it hit me all at once. And I felt like I kept asking people like, is my heart beating? You know, cause I thought I was dying or something like that. Yeah. Then I went to bed and then I heard we were in a, in like a townhouse that was connected to another townhouse. And I guess the people next door were up and walking around, but it sounded like people were walking on the roof. <laughs> and I for sure thought there was like, I did, no joke, I was convinced the FBI <laughs> or the CIA was on the roof because of my Facebook posts. They were fucking- I, Isn't I made that this, crazy how bro, paranoid you can get? I made up the most like, insane story in my head. Yeah. It was so terrifying. And afterwards, like, I really thought that. 
That yeah. was my worst experience by far. Yeah, I had a very similar experience to that. It's a, I ate <clears throat> in a, a brownie that one of my cousins gave me, and it was like back then where there's no dispensaries. You know what I yeah. mean? Like nobody's nobody knows how much they're putting. I have no idea how much was in it. You know what I mean? I ate the whole thing, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Like it, it was a good brownie, and I just ate the whole thing, and it didn't hit me. You know, and so I was waiting and waiting and waiting and like, ah, let's smoke, you know, whatever. And so we're just playing video games. And then, then, you know, I thought initially it was coming on like from the smoke. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is working, whatever. And then, (laughs) like, I've literally like melted into my chair. And then I couldn't, I couldn't hold my head up. And then I'm like, I'm like getting lower and lower and lower. I'm on the ground. I'm like looking up. I'm like, I don't feel good, man. I don't feel good. I literally was like crawling on the ground. And then I finally like just threw up for oh. for like two, I swear it was like two hours throwing up. I remember distinctively like, you know how at the end of a movie where you get like, like an old movie, you get the reel where uh, it like flashes and it's like a clip of yeah, like yeah. the movie oh, reel. You get the repeats. Dude, like life was doing that. You know, like I was like looking out and it was, it was like clips like rolling over and over and over like that. Dude, that's common with like too much cannabis up. where you get the repeats. Yeah. I, I had that with the, um, there was a song that was playing and we were playing music. And then when I, when it really hit me, that same, it was like a five second clip of the song kept playing in my head over yeah. and over, kept playing in my head. It was terrible. Dude, yeah. you know, like, have you guys, you guys heard of Salvia? Yeah. Oh, I've never done that. So me either. No, Thank God. I, that was like, it wasn't even my experience, but like there was with two of my friends that, that did it. Like, oh, you were with somebody who did with it? With them. Oh, yeah, wow. They, they fucking trip out, right? It was the creepiest thing right. I've ever seen. Were I they just, scared I after? They, they were trying to describe it to me. Like they <laughs> felt like somebody was like behind them. There's like a presence in there with them and all this yeah. shit. And like, they were like just looking at their face yeah. that I couldn't even, they were gone. What you know, if, their eyes were like shark eyes. What if these drugs, what if these drugs like that are, what if you're not hallucinating? What if it really is like tapping like you a into a portal to a dimension? Yeah. And yeah. you see demons and shit. For I real. Know, seriously, dude. That's I was like, ew, this is, it was it was weird, man. Fuck he started that. crawling like a dog and was like, Rrr. he started doing that. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude. They act. They, they were, there was like a thing in two thousand and I want to say like, like eight or nine. There was a big salvia kick that they, they were making the, all the viral videos on YouTube. Yeah. You remember that? That uh-huh. made me that guy jumping out the window. And oh, everything. crazy yeah. stuff, bro. Crazy. Nah, I'm cool. I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with that. What about the time you did? What about the, the time you did? It was like five months ago. We did like 75 milligrams of oh, yeah. cannabis on accident. <laughs> the irony, you know what I was just thinking? What, where you guys are telling your stories, I'm thinking like, what are the worst things that for me? And I've, I don't know, I've, I've tried most drugs, and I, I, all the bad experiences are with the ones that are totally not the scary ones that everyone freaks out about, right? Yeah, like, like so, alcohol or weed. Yeah, I've had the worst experiences on alcohol, marijuana, and ephedra. You know what I'm saying? Three things oh, are like a good one. Oh, three things right. that are like commonly accepted, I yeah. think, by people that I had the work. And but I think what it is is because it's accepted, widely accepted, we treat it like a different drug, and it, and you so take you're more of it. Yeah, like, you take more of a risk, and you, do, you push you push boundaries with those things. And because of that, you know, I I've overdone it oh. on a Fedra to where I didn't sleep for two days and heart racing. And sc- I literally remember praying like in bed, going like. Please God, just let this stop because I yeah. feel my heart pounding. That happened to me. Yeah, yeah, pounding out of my chest, going like, "Okay, I'll never do that." That happened again. to my dad. Really? Yeah. So my dad is my dad's hilarious man. It's like I'm totally my dad's son. So my dad will do like energy drinks and stuff, and then he likes it because he'll go work out and have a good workout or whatever. So one day um, I get a, a phone call at like it's like 4 a.m. and I answer the phone and it's my dad. I'm like, "What's going on, man?" I'm you know obviously it's my dad at 4 a.m. So I hope everybody's okay. He's like, I can't sleep. And I can hear in his voice, you know, I'm like, what's the matter? Like, what's going on? He's like, well, I went to the gym today. And he goes, and first I had a, a Red Bull. And then my friend gave me some pills. I'm like, pills? What kind of pills did you take? He goes, let me get the package. So he gets the package and he reads it to me. Yellow jacket. Yeah. Yellow jacket? <laughs> yeah. Like the trucker pills? Yeah. Oh, so, shit. Yeah. I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, does it have like 25 milligrams of ephedrine? Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so what happened? He goes, oh, he goes, I felt the great. He goes, I went to the gym. He goes, I did all the weights. You know, so he's talking. I work, <laughs> out, for, them, yeah. Yeah. I work out for three hours. I feel good. I go home. He goes, but I can't sleep. I just stare at the ceiling. He's, and I'm like, what are you doing right now? He's like, I'm going for a walk. I'm like, outside? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, you're probably going to be okay. Go home and drink a shit ton of chamomile tea. 
And within a couple hours, you'll probably be fine. And he was. <laughs> and after that, I had me and my mom had a nice conversation with him. <laughs> my dad's just sitting there getting lectured like a kid, you know. No more, no more drugs. No more dad. yellow jackets, dad. <laughs> hey, did you guys see that? Uh, uh, Jersey Shore is doing a comeback. They're going to be on TV again. No, they're not. Why? Yes, they are. I saw. Um, I can't wait. What's his name? Uh, what's his name? Mike. I mean, who doesn't love the situation, right? What's his name? Yeah, in, switch. In, Mike in, Sorrentino. In or something like that. I saw him after after they blew up in Vegas. <clears throat> we were both on our way into Hakkasan, uh, the club nightclub, and he was. I was or I was on my way in. He was on his way getting thrown out when I was going in. Oh shit! <laughs> Just obliterated dude just sloppy ass drunk and stuff like that security carrying him out and him slurring on spilling all over a lot of people don't realize this but the situation mike he's the guy that funded Funded shreds shreds yeah Yeah, he's connected to arvin in fact arvin was in an episode of jersey shore he was yep oh i didn't know that yep he was there was an episode where they had him they were he was visiting and they were like picking up on chicks and stuff (laughs) And, and i know this because i was a diehard fan sorry I know I just let everybody down. I loved the Jersey Shore when, Dude, I, when it was on. No, it's great. Man. <clears throat> it was it's hilarious. Like trash TV. Yeah, I love it. I liked the first the, the first season. Then it got stupid after that. But. So I, I, I every every I once in a while, Brett Michaels Rock of Love. I yeah. I check up on Shreds to jam. see where the. I don't. Did you guys see the post? I posted like, hey, what happened to these guys? It's but you know like because they've just kind of fallen off. And so <laughs> I have this theory right now, and I got to show you guys. I meant to, I'm glad you brought this up because this just reminded me of this. I totally forgot about this. So it looks to me like Joey Swole has pivoted to this new company that literally looks spot on to like all the stuff that it's basically the same supplement line as Shreds, but name, named it completely, branded it completely different yeah. and putting like a hole in the, and I would not be surprised Cuts. if Arvin is like a silent partner behind on that. So while Shreds is from all like the, rebranding. Oh, totally. Look up, look up Joey Swole's page right now. Are you connected to your phone? Right I can't. Now? I can't. Uh, okay. I'm blocked me. Yeah. So <clears throat> Joey Swole blocked me. You yeah. don't have like a I made you, too many silly videos. You can't him. go through another account of yours. No, I can't. You should be able to go through another account. Well, he he started it by I'll, I'll look up the name of the company because you should be here. You're probably not blocked from that account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're now starting up this supplement. It just he just started it maybe a couple maybe a month or two ago. I saw. Oh, thanks, Doug. Are you pulling up right now? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Doug, scroll down a little bit till you see like him probably promoting his oh, stuff. God. Oh, yeah, that one in the shower. What the fuck? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Keep Come going on. Down. What is? Yeah, what is that right there? There's the line right there. What does that say? What's it? Rise. It's called Rise. Now, click on the Rise. Uh, see where it says Rise Subs in the link. Link. I mean, that. but does it have a Z in it? Right there. Right there. Rise. Right there. Yeah. So there you go. So oh, check this out. Good. That's their new supplement. Yeah. Scroll all the way to the top. Oh God. Yeah, they're just see it's only got nine thousand followers just started. But if you scroll through all and you look at all the ingredients yeah. and all the different things, they literally have taken like all the shreds <laughs> formulas. Hilarious. So I would not be surprised if it's this just, rebranded. Yeah, it. they've just threw another label on all like, that stuff. Ah, this is getting too much of a stigma. Let's create, you know, let's just move over here. Oh, yeah. com- completely. shuffle. <clears throat> look at it. Shuffle, I mean, if shuffle. you look at all the th- if you look at a shreds website and then you compare like all the products they have on it, uh, it's like the same product line. It's it's so, product, same branding with the fucking protein shake. Oh, or in, dude, in the, every picture fucking hilarious dude. the crazy you know what's the most the hilarious and the most crazy part about this is it's gonna work yeah that's people what will buy it at first. that's what blows my mind people motherfucker's fu- gonna go make a couple million dollars off this no problem <clears throat> he'll make a people couple million idiots. it'll tank then he'll do another one it'll yeah. tank it's like the old you know what it reminds me of it's a, a lot hasn't changed since fucking the 1800s or whatever when you had the snake oil salesman it is exactly they would, like they'd that. have their they'd have their, their their truck with the you know snake oil and you know you know lizard gizzard you know or whatever yeah. and they'd go from town to town ripping people off like this will grow your you know bald hair solution oh, people don't and, like this one yeah oh no and you go to the next town and the next town and the next town because they haven't heard about your bullshit yet you know what yeah, I'm saying? right right yeah it's no, no that's exactly what that is you it's know, no different was you, it the situation did you ever see him on comedy central's roast Oh, he was terrible. It was the most uncomfortable was thing I've uncomfortable. ever seen, dude. Super uncomfortable. Oh, my was God. Was he getting roasted or was he roasting he someone? Was, he was trying to roast. He was trying to be on the panel and roast people. Oh. And it was just, it was And then bad. everybody turned on him. Oh, it was bad, dude. He got booed hella bad. Yeah. Like, the comedians actually tried to help him out at one point because yeah. it actually felt bad. So, if you're ever, like, on a stage and comedians are trying to help you because they feel bad for you, you know you're, you're fucking bombing. Yeah, hard. Yeah. What happens in that case? Like, you're, you you get your, like, little, you know, 15 minutes of fame. You're on your show. You're making your money. So that now these people start wanting you on all these other things. Like, 
do you do it because you need the the paper or what or like because if I would never I would never put my as much as I love that show yeah. I would never put myself up there because I don't have that talent like I don't have the talent to get up there and like <laughs> roast somebody. Yeah, and I would so I wouldn't even. I don't accept know, that. man. You might, you, but the thing about you, you'd be resourceful. You get people to help, kind of write something for well, you. Well, I'm not right? an idiot like him, so I could probably he put just something like together. Wings right. it, and it's it's fucking so uncomfortable. That was the like the most uncomfortable like I don't know 30 seconds of television I ever had to sit Dude, through. You have to be if you're if you're somebody that ever gets a 15 minutes of fame. Like you need to maximize that shit because once it's gone, it's gone. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. Well, that now that's Ride what I, that's what I think these guys do is they they get their show, it hits, and then they then they just accept everything that the else they're just willing. squeeze that shit real yeah, hard. Right, right, right. I would hate though. I swear to God, man, I would hate to be famous like that because you know there's going to be a backlash at some point, and then you're and then you're fucked because yeah, now, famous for what? Yeah. Well, but here's the deal. Now let's say you're you're let's say you're that one of those guys on on the Jersey Shore, and you you make all this money from the Jersey Shore, but then the backlash comes. Everybody thinks you're a douchebag. Now you try to get a regular job, and you, you're going to walk into a place. They're going to recognize you. Oh, you're that fucking <laughs> asshole. Nobody wants to hire you're you. You're just working at Starbucks. You're like, hey man. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it, everybody doesn't want to hire you because what comes with someone like that is a million plus following of people that are watching him, whether you like him or not. You're watching him, and so if I'm some sort of a brand that's trying to get off, get off my, you know, off the yeah, ground. Yeah, but, but if everybody thinks you're an idiot at that point, you know what I mean? You might not be worth anything. You, well, ask yourself, what's better, somebody who's got a million followers and half the people think he's an idiot or somebody who nobody knows yeah. what's what would be better for your business i don't know i wouldn't want to be known to be i idiot. mean i'm not disagreeing in the fact that like i would hire a motherfucker like that but i mean you got it you got to see the other side of I, that too i think that. what he did with shreds was smart like he he gave them money and then he wasn't in it you know what i mean you didn't yeah. know nobody knew he was like a, the, the the funder that was a smart move actually if you think about it yeah. do, you, do you think they're really that smart or do you think they're just really good boys and he and they he said hey bro I need some money and it was like, an accident and he's probably yeah, making millions what of do, dollars do doing, doing blow and shit and he's like hey bro uh, here's 50 grand I got you <laughs> idiot savant yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's more like that uh, I, I don't think it was like yeah. oh my god this shreds business plan is Let's fucking check from MTV it's fucking brilliant bro here's here's a, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no I don't think it was like that oh, like, you're into protein yeah. I'm into protein like, oh you want you make a protein yeah. dude Dude, so make sure there's a Z in there though so, so I read an article yesterday that made me so angry. I have to share it with you guys right now. Really pisses me off. So they did some, uh, there's a, a research uh, organization called uh, Orb Media that conducted research at the State University of New York, and they took 250 bottles of water from 11 different brands, including the top brands. Oh, I already of know where Are you going? already, man, you're going to try and bum us out. No, I already know this. It's tap water. Half, yeah. Most of them are tap water. No, that's not what, that's, it's worse than that. Oh, it's worse than that. So, like so heavy much, metals in there and shit. So and much worse. Toilet cyanide. water, bro. So they took like, of like the top brands like Aquafina and just a lot of these top brands, right? I've you know, always thought Aquafina tastes like shit. <laughs> I'm a Dasani guy. Uh, Dasani. I'm a Evian. No, really? I'm a Evian guy. Please Evian, say no. Ev no. Evian, Dasani, all of them, almost, I think all of them found- Fiji? Uh, bro, plastic particles. Oh, well, it's in a plastic bottle. Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. You know, you know you're drinking plastic particles? Well, I mean, you're kind of. I mean, you're drinking from a bottle. I'm sure some of a plastic bottle. I'm well, sure. So it's not, well, so it's not. Is it just like they, the particles in the air this that is make why, their way well, in? This, no, is no, no, they, no, no, this is why they tell you not to leave like those legit. in your car because the sun hits it and then it. So it's different than that. Uh, so it's different than the chemicals leaching from the plastic. Right. That's like it's actually particles of plastic, and they think it has to come from the the, the machines that put the like the bottle caps and stuff on. Right. So you're actual like small it's like dust that's getting in there. From, yes. Yeah. The top, and, dude. That shit. Is going. Your body's trying to filter it out. Fuck. It's going to your liver. Probably xenoestrogen. Probably causing estrogen. You know. Don't cross. say that to me, dude. Dude, Ugh. fucked up. Well, I got the I got the big uh, I got yeah. the Alhambra filter at my house. Yeah. That's cool. I, my, my, yeah, my uh, uh, refrigerator has a filter and. I'm now yeah. using that that mirror uh, canister too, yes. which is great. I'm starting to bring that to work. What's so that? at least this right it's here. A, yeah, it's like. Oh, I see. So it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, is it aluminum or it's yeah? It's some kind of a metal that uh, you know. I don't know. It feels safer than. It plastic. It feels better than plastic yeah. at least. So. Uh, well, I'm gonna get making a, moves in that direction. When it, when it, so when did this come out? And was did it did yesterday? It, did it cause a bunch of shit? Oh yeah, it? all over the place. Oh, all over, everybody's oh man. Going, yeah, because I mean, when you're consuming particles of of plastic. Um, that could have some long, you know, long-term effects on you, including, you know, potentially increasing your risk of cancer. 
and everybody drinks fucking bottled water now. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, a reverse osmosis filter now for there my you house. Go. Did you guys see the uh, the I, from a hose, the man. I Hate Media Company, which is like the largest uh, radio uh, station company in the United States, just file for bankruptcy? No, really? Yeah, dude. Like they were like twenty twenty billion dollars in debt or something crazy. Sayonara, radio's gone. It's done, dude. That's like, that is like the big. Like you know a, what else I think? Big gone? domino, bro. You know National else, television. You know what else I think is going to be gone? Yeah, broadcast satellite, TV. I think satellite radio is going to be gone too. Oh yeah, every well everything's streaming, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everything is. Every, it's going to go internet. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. The, the internet rules. Because you know, you know Howard Stern, uh, who is uh, you know he's still on satellite radio. Howard Stern, still arguably one of the most powerful people in you know radio type mediums. His contract is coming up, and it's being widely speculated that he's not going to—he's not going to continue doing. It. He's going to retire. Well, he'd be smart not to. I mean, he—he he was one of the first to talk shit about podcasts. But that's—I get it. You know, he had a huge contract with Sirius yeah. Radio. So why would you uh, get on the podcast? Of course, you're going to talk shit about yeah, that. You're exactly. influencing millions of people, and like you—that's probably the Super biggest threat to our. Yeah. Well, bro, if he leaves, he moves the podcast. That would be he huge. leaves satellite radio. Over. Satellites fucked. Over. Oh, yeah. well, over. Game over. Done. Done. Death. Done. I, done. I, done. Honestly. The only people I personally know, this is personally that I know, that listen to satellite radio, listen to for Howard Stern. That's it. That's yep. it. The yep. only reason, like or that, Jason Ellis, I think was the other one. Because even yeah. the even the the music <laughs> on there, like, I would way rather listen through Pandora or Spotify. Spotify is a company I'm fascinated with. Watch Spotify. What Spotify <sighs> is doing moves. with their platform? They're making some serious moves. I feel like they're already competing hard with like iTunes and everybody. So they, oh, they're I think crazy. they're smacking on iTunes. Yeah. I think they're building a a, a user interface. That is not only going to be like uh, um, uh, fucking Pandora and have all those capabilities, it has all those capabilities, but it's starting to mold and look like this interactive platform like Instagram. Yeah, you so, can share, uh, <laughs> yeah, share playlists. and follow, and they really have really it. Really cool. They really, they're, they've really been building it out to to make it all uh, like the experience of it more awesome, which I think it is great. And they really haven't aesthetically fucked with it. I think when they start as- fucking with it aesthetically, like you're going to see it kind of rival like Instagram and that you'll now like, especially if you're a music person, if you love music and you're into looking for what's fucking hot and what's new and following other other a- uh, artists that are out there, I think Spotify is the platform to to keep an eye oh, on. Oh, yeah, they're very forward thinking. <clears throat> you know what else is forward thinking? What? Trump, he's actually, <laughs> have you heard about him trying to get uh, a space force out there? So oh, we're ahead of everybody. A what? <laughs> Space Force, bro. That, doesn't that sound like a fucking, space balls? That yeah. sound, no, space. It sounds like a cool cartoon we'd watch in the eighties. Space yeah. Force. Space Force. Is yeah. this supposed to rival SpaceX? Yeah. What no. do you mean space? So he's gonna put like a military, like a space. military, right? Like like putting the military up there to make sure like we're covering space. We're bro. covering the air. We're covering the water and the land. Now we gotta cover space. Oh fuck, dude! Star Wars what is the here. Fuck. Well, Star Wars is here. Dude, Justin, you what you out always as a joke. wanted, dude. I know. <laughs> this is what you always wanted. Dude, we have lasers. You, you told me you had lasers, right? Yeah, like, yeah. We got lasers that shoot yeah. down you may get missiles. A chance to be Han Solo, bro. It's getting close. Once there's a death ray, bro. Watch well, out. Well, so you know, there's a there's like an international treaty that no country is gonna ever build a base on the moon. Like that's a big thing, right? That's a big international. Of treaty. course, can you imagine? Watch Trump be the first one to be like, "Fuck oh, that!" Shit. We'll put a base on the moon. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> moon base. <laughs> yeah, moon base. Jesus Christ! Uh, I heard. Doing? I heard people speculating, like again, like that. Did we even land on the moon? I saw that come. I saw that going out the other day. I was like, "Do you still flat Earth people? There's still people that don't believe we land on the oh, moon." Oh man, so yeah, true. that that'll always be there. I Hollywood think, man, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, they just faked everything. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. So, uh, another cool article here. Uh, the first hamburger flipping robot. Oh, I saw that. Activated, and it actually had, they had to turn it off. Oh, shit. What happened? Why? Because it, it was. Start killing them, No, right? it was too fast. It was oh. too efficient. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking human workers couldn't keep up with it. What? Was, Come on. That's true. Get out I just of here. read the article. Come on. Absolutely. Well, what do you mean they could? They, 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 he was making burgers too quick? It was. It was Next. Too, they had to, like, they have to figure out how to make it yeah. slow down or whatever. Yeah. Here's the deal, like, you know, I, I think all this. Would you like bacon with that? <laughs> yeah, all these all these uh, jobs that require very very low skill, they're all going to be replaced by machines at some point. It, but if they keep raising minimum wage, they're just going to make that shit happen so much faster. You know what I mean? They raise that shit to fifteen dollars. You know, say isn't goodbye that, to isn't all that ironic? The people that are fighting yeah. or love the the increase of minimum wage are the ones that are, th- are probably their jobs are most threatened. Dude, Dude. it's it's totally. Yeah, but all these all these low skill jobs kind of crazy when you think the about damn it. damn robots are taking over our job. <laughs> Build a wall. Yeah. So uh, no, but that's that's exactly what's happening. So you have market pressures, which are 
you know, you want to create artificial market pressures that make this happen faster. All you got to do is raise the minimum wage. And then the cost to benefit ratio is going to get better for companies to just automate everything. And then what are you going to do? Fuck. Now there's no work. You know what I mean? What other jobs would be automated? I, I'm sure fast food for sure. Yeah. You know, what else? Toll booths. Yeah. Right? Why the, you know why those aren't automated yet? Can I tell you right, right now? Uh, the fucking bullshit unions. Union. That's why. Oh, yeah. There's no reason. Listen, if you work a toll, I'm, I'm sorry, okay, but this is true now. You hate your life already. When I drive I through and pay a toll and you just stick your hand out and, and take my money, <clears throat> why? Why? Why does that even exist? Yeah. Why is there a person there? Yeah. It should be a machine. That's the way I, I don't know. It's so unsanitary too. Can you imagine like taking everybody's dirty ass money all day? Like, yeah. Ugh. I mean, I think it's almost across the board. Almost think of, tell me, I have a better question. Tell me a minimum wage job that you can't see being replaced by AI. Totally. Hmm. It's great. All of them. No. Yeah. Think uh, about in our space when we're in the gym. I, I mean, I could see, if, I mean, why we have front desk people. Yeah, why are you people checking in? in? Yeah, yeah. All that stuff will. Of All course. that will go away. Speaking, so. speaking of business, robot watching. Speaking you. of business, you guys saw Toys R Us, right? No. Closing all like all their stores in the US and the UK. Man, it's just a matter of time. Retail. Well, it's, it's because Walmart <coughs> fucking destroyed them. Um, and then Amazon, Amazon Amazon destroyed them. So Toys R Us, which was like when I was a kid. I feel like World War Three is gonna be Amazon and Walmart. They're gonna have their own like, yeah, <laughs> they're gonna each other. they're gonna get an army and they're gonna fight each other. Dude, when I was a kid, <laughs> Toys R Us was uh, f- I mean, was there any better place to uh, go? Do you remember that? It was, no. it was great. So, yeah, there was no better place. So I read about you know what happened, like the decline of Toys R Us. So apparently they were super in debt. So they'd made some bad business moves where they put themselves in debt, then, which meant they had to cut money from the, the, the Toys R Us experience. And I, I noticed this. A couple of years ago, I went to a Toys R Us, and it was the worst fucking experience of all time. Like, mm. st- shelves were stocked shitty, and there were barely any employees. Like, this is terrible. Toys R Us used to be Disneyland. What the hell happened? Oh, no. I, oh, I yeah. remember, like, maybe <coughs> 10 years ago when they first came out with the uh, the kids scanning the their <clears throat> Christmas gifts and their birthday gifts. Have yeah. you seen that? No. Oh, it's so brilliant. Oh, for, like, a so, wish list? They, yeah, they, they give a kid a gun. Okay, so for a wish list for, like, that Christmas. Is brilliant. He gets a gun, and he gets to run around the store and shoot the barcode on all the things that he wants. <laughs> really? It, and, and, this, then it, and then this, it automatically like uploads it into a Christmas list. I'm like, that is so brilliant, man. I That's mean, they, they already for, did that for weddings, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, it makes sense for adults, but and imagine strippers, how yeah. smart is that? And you know that every yeah. kid wants to do that, and then it, all, the, all he does is run around shooting everything. It's such <laughs> great advertisement for the store you know for someone to do that it's and like it's, it's yeah. like a wedding registry or whatever for kids. totally I that kids was are a- spoiled as fuck man i know you're gonna get more than it's one thing worst. for christmas please what the hell's wrong with please you stop giving your kids so many fucking toys you know why kids are you know what you want to know something right now i'm gonna go on a rant you know why Ugh. kids you know why kids are so offended by everything and fucking in their safe spaces and shit let me t- give them everything no because we've talked about this several times on the show now challenge gives life meaning Kids have no challenges, so they have to invent challenges. You know what I mean? They have to make yeah. shit up. They have to yeah. get offended by shit because they don't have a war. They don't have a plague. They don't have anything that's like really challenging them. They right. get everything they want. They fucking sit in their, you know, in their computers and have everything delivered to them. Yeah, we won't let them climb on really tall shit because they're gonna break their arm. Yeah. So yeah. they're like, so then they grow up to be college kids, and they're like, oh, I need a puppy and a fucking coloring book because I'm offended that the teacher said, yeah. you know, stupid to me or something right. like that. <laughs> no, sometimes you're stupid. No, I'm... Sometimes someone needs to tell you that shit. That's all I'm saying. I, 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 mean, I think there's still just as many kids that probably get none of those things. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I don't know how much that's changed since we were kids. Like. Those the kids that you just named are probably the spoiled little shits that have parents that have lots of money that could do all those yeah. things. There's probably equally yeah. as many, if not more, kids who don't get any of that shit. And less, less of them. Right, less of them. I think there's the, a lot more spoiled the, assholes. Out here's there. the thing: the thing about uh, and this we haven't figured this out yet. The thing about uh, open and free markets, or, or relatively free markets, I, sh- I should say, like capitalism, is that it elevates uh, everybody. So. Although the gap between the wealthy and the poor starts to get bigger, the poor also uh, improve quite a bit so that somebody today who's poor versus someone 20 years ago who's poor, they have far more things and far more access to things than they did 20 years ago. So although the gap becomes larger, we're lifting so many people out of poverty. We lifted more people out of poverty in the 20th century than we did in the previous like you know ten thousand years of human history, it's pretty crazy. What do you think? You think that's mostly technology? What do you think the reason for that is? All well, all that's what a big part of it's it. It's what markets uh, promote. Markets promote 
uh, increased efficiency because people become more and more specialized with what they're doing. The competitive forces of the market mean that you have essentially billions of people working together to solve problems voluntarily, but they're all doing it for their own personal, you know, uh, for their own selves, right? So when you look at a product like an iPhone, the amount of people it took to make that phone, both directly and indirectly, is just in- insane. So you're basically buying a fraction of every per- person's time. Markets promote that, so efficiency just becomes so insane. Do you think that we could actually, uh, through technology and science, lift uh, us completely out of poverty? Oh, yeah, for sure. It will happen 100%. Look at that 3D printed <laughs> homes we talked yeah. about. No, I agree. I just I think that's crazy when you think about that. But there's another problem here. There's a psychological problem, and that's because I just there was another article I was going to bring up where the suicide. If you are if you're poor, or if you make a certain amount of money and you live near people who make a lot more than you, your suicide the suicide rate goes up by five percent versus if you're poor and you're around other poor people. So just knowing that other people have a lot more than you and being around them hmm. psychologically it can be very challenging for humans. So there definitely is a psychological problem with a gap between you know people who are doing really really well and then people like yourself who may be doing normal or less than well that whole keeping up with the joneses that com- you right. know comparing that's a real problem but i don't think it's a problem with it's not you know capitalism didn't create that problem that's Couldn't you a argue human that issue. it's also a good thing too i mean it's real similar to the theory of having the kids with you know second all the way to eighth grade all working together in school Having different people, like having... Well, it's obviously necessary. Hierarchy ladders have existed in human for human civilization forever. So there's a reason why they exist. And it, capitalism didn't create them. It's something that exists among humans. And humans have... Pro, have not, it's essential, obviously, because we have them. Like, uh, like uh, there's something called a Pareto distribution, <laughs> where a small percentage of people in creative fields create a majority of the work. So, for example, if you look at like all the like top selling music that was written, there's a very small percentage of people that have written most of the top selling music. When you look at it, uh, you know, how many people write music or, you know, authors or scientists or inventors or entrepreneurs, there's a small percentage that create most of the inventions Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you look at that. So that's not necessarily a bad thing because you want the people who are the most capable to be able to produce the most things for most people, right? Like you want the Steve Jobs and the Elon well, it Musk to do that a shit. formula and then they systematize it and then it just they can replicate it. Well, I, I yeah, like you don't want to get rid of, of like those starting people. from scratch. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get rid of those people. But then there is this issue where humans have this natural issue where if they see someone else has more than them, yeah, it causes problems. Yeah, but, but that's I would also that's interesting. I, I would also argue this: if you have five, so let's say we have five thousand poor people and you put them in a community with. 5,000 super rich and wealthy people, I would argue that the 5,000 poor people, there's a, a greater percentage of those people that will elevate in in pursuit of keeping up with the Joneses or because they're around other people that are succeeding. And there probably will be a higher rate of suicide and failure, but we'd get more people that would rise up. If you took that same 5,000 poor people and you put them in a community of 5,000 other poor people as poor or poorer than them, I think you're less likely to see those 5,000 people elevate. Oh, of course. No, look, here's the deal. Would you, would you rather be a poor person in a rich Western society Society or a poor person in a third world society, right. right? But that's logical. That's objective logic. There is this psychological phenomena though that happens with humans where regardless of how much you have, right? Mm-hmm. Because listen, here's the deal. When you talk to people and, and, and they talk about the rich, the rich is anybody who has more than they do. Okay. Right. So I don't care if you talk to someone who's a millionaire. The comparison is the thief of joy. It's always, exactly. So it's not a problem oh, with great markets. Quote there. You, every once in a while, you throw a little zinger. <laughs> very, there. very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do what I do. Uh, you uh, compare, you know, comparison is or, or or having an issue with that. That's a human existential issue. It's not an issue with capitalism or markets. That's just an issue humans have, and it happens. It doesn't matter if you're in a poor country, a rich country, or whatever. So that's something that we need to work on ourselves. But you know, markets just promote. You know, they they promote wealth for everybody, but there is that gap, right? Because some people are just going to do a lot better because they're more conscientious, more intelligent, and whatever. So, mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. stuff. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout.
First question is from Linzer Beth. Is direct ab work necessary? I do the big lifts, bench, squat, deadlift. Yeah. Is my core getting hit hard enough with those lifts and accessories each body two times a week? Or should I be adding ab work in as question. well? That is a good question. There's a, there's a you know, a, a little while ago, there was like this myth that, you know, you don't need to, and it is a myth, you, you don't need to hit your abs or your core because your core gets stimulated like crazy when you when you squat real heavy. Well, because you, you are bracing. And, you know, th- this myth was, was created and perpetrated by lazy people who don't want to work out their <laughs> core. Actually, it was by, it was seriously... It's by power lifters who could give a shit about having a six pack. I can see that. that yeah. you, and they're strong as fuck. And they use a belt anyways. Yeah, and they're yeah. strong as fuck. Right. And if you do look at like EMG, you know, tests or whatever where they, you know, the, test the the activation of a muscle, does your core activate strongly when you squat and deadlift real heavy? Yeah, it does. Of course, it needs to support you. Yeah. But muscles- That's get, not its only function though. No, exactly. And muscles get strong in very specific ways. In other words, if I train my core to brace really hard- I'm going to have good strength to brace, but if I move outside of that and I look to do, uh, you know, if I start to f- flex at the spine in any direction, whatever. Trying to get it from the ground. Dude, you know how many guys I used to work out with wh- who were super strong deadlifters and powerlifters or whatever, and then I'd have them do like just regular like leg raises or sit-ups or whatever, and they'd shake like, g- 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 while they're doing, because <laughs> yeah. they have no control over that new range of motion. Mm-hmm. Like your, your best bet is always to train your muscles in their fullest ranges of motion and how they express themselves to give you the more, the most full spectrum performance, right? right? Well, this is this is I'm somebody who fell into this category for sure. I I and part of the reason why I did was because my abs have always been exposed, so you I could was, see them, right? So I was a kid who uh, was relatively lean all the time, and you know having abs was not hard for me. Building muscle was harder for me, and so I was looking at all the other muscle groups on my body that I wanted to develop more. And sure, I got away with it, and I was fine. But now, as a you know, thirty-seven-year-old man, now what I see what's going on with me is I have such poor connection to my abdominals that it doesn't help keep my my pelvic in a neutral position, and so it's part of what I why I naturally default to this anterior pelvic tilt, and I can feel it contributing so much that when I like like when we sit on planes, my low back will start to fucking kill me, yeah. mm-hmm. and so I'll sit on the plane. And I'll and I'll sit up and then I'll and I'll kind of squeeze my abs. And that'll, will that alleviate the pressure? Yes, it'll completely alleviate the pressure from my low back. And I remember the first time that I made that connection, and I knew right away it was this is my fault for never really strength training my abs to support me when I'm seated in a position like that. So if you're somebody who sits in a chair for a really long time or flies a lot and you notice that your low back bothers you all the time, this could be one of the contributors. It, it yeah. is for me. It was definitely something that I neglected for a very long time and and, it, and I still do. I, I'll be the, that will be the first thing that I neglect out of everything else because of this visual thing and I always know I pay for it when I pay attention to that and then when I'm actually training it, when I'm training my core, I'm working my abdominals and then I go yeah. and I sit on a plane or I sit down totally fine it's yeah. definitely one of those i could get lazy about like between because for my my view of like crunching or or you know doing sit-ups was very bodybuilder-esque right that was like a an exercise you know for bodybuilders that and bicep curls you know and so those were two things that were like um just from <laughs> an athletic or functional perspective i'm like well i'll just do planks or you know rotations or things like that where i'm expressing uh, you know, ab contraction, but then again, like I'm totally neglecting uh, a major function of, of my abs. And, and so like every now and then I'll go back and I'll be, Oh yeah. And it, you know, and it's just being lazy, you know, it, it's, it's totally one of those things. Like, like my, I need to work out my abdominals and I need to, to do those exercises well, in to our benefit de- the whole. In our defense too, though, I, I think that there is a priority, right? So I, I remember teaching clients and knowing that they need to do abs, but also knowing that this client needs to do a lot of other things also. So I think there's there's an order of operation. Now, mm-hmm. hands down, if I have somebody, when I assess them and I look at their posture and they have like an excessive anterior pelvic tilt, like it's, an, it's a no-brainer. That now becomes a priority. 
Now, if you're somebody who has really good spine alignment, you don't have any low back pain, you don't have any real conditions like that, it now gets dropped down on the list as far as a priority for me. So it really depends on who I'm talking to on how much emphasis I put on this. Because let's be honest, doing some of these ab exercises and crunches, when you compare it to squatting or deadlifting, you're not getting nowhere near as much bang for your buck because at least the squat no. and the deadlift has some carryover it's, to your No, it's true. And But I will say this, like rarely will you see a trainer not do curls or tricep extension with a client. But they'll 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 skip it, you know, core exercise or abs. Yeah, which, no, that's silly. Which it's more important. It's more important than those. The funny thing too about b- about bicep curls, Justin, is you know working with uh, Robert Oberst, how many curls he does. Yeah, because it protects his bicep from tearing when he does he's, his heavy. You know, exactly, he's definitely like figured that out, like how to right. preserve, uh, you know, his arms, like and, and prevent that from tearing. Here's a here's what you want to ask yourself: Will I have? Will I benefit from being stronger in a muscle, or will I have a detriment? Oh, never will you have a detriment from being stronger in a muscle. So it's a good idea, even if you don't do a sport that requires you to do lots of crunches or whatever, mm-hmm. it's only going to benefit you. Now, I, this was for me mind blowing years ago because, so I used to get, I would, I would, uh, in the summertime, I would always diet and get real lean and I get down like 9% body fat and I'd have a six pack only when I flexed my abs. Uh, otherwise I was just lean, right? But you couldn't see my abs when I was relaxed and I was always jealous. I was like, damn, I wanted... I wanted abs when I was relaxed too because you see some guys like that, right? Where they walk around, they don't even have to flex and they have a six pack. And I thought it was just I had to get even leaner. And so I would get really, really leaner, you know, really lean and I'd get down to like 7% body fat and you'd, you'd kind of see them when I was relaxed, but it wasn't what I thought it was. So one year I just decided I'm going to work out my core and see what happens. And I started training my abs and my obliques like I trained the rest of my body. I trained them uh, you know, three days a week. I train them with resistance sometimes. So I would try to build my muscles. And that year, my abs built big time to the point where now I have visible abs when I'm relaxed at like 11% body fat. Whereas before I had to have to get down to like 8% body fat. So aesthetically speaking, you can build this freaking armor of uh, of a core if you build your ab muscles like you like you would with your biceps or anything else. But that all being said... This is true for all your muscles of your entire body. The goal should be, if you're looking for maximum function, to train your muscles in all the ways that they articulate themselves or, or they, that they articulate your joints. Is this what really inspired you to create uh, the No BS Totally, abs? 100%. It was mind-blowing to me because up until that point, it was an afterthought, so I do some crunches here. And I also thought you're supposed to work out your abs with a lot of reps. So when I started training them, you know, it dawned on me, like, why not just train my core like I train the rest of my body? If I want to build it, I need to use a, res- a sufficient amount of resistance. And it was like, it was within a matter of months. It was like three months later, I had these bricks for abs that were just, and when I train them really hard and I get them in really good shape, if I'm around 10% body fat, I'll wear a t-shirt. If it's a tight t-shirt, you can see my abs through my shirt. This is so different from the way I used to look. Like I did not have abs that really were visible and it's because I built them through, you know, full range of motion training. But like what I, what I was saying earlier is you want to train all your body. I mean, imagine if we tra- if we if we used uh, this mentality with other body parts. What if I said all you need for your biceps is really strong stabilization? Yeah. You know what like I'm saying? Farmer walks. Yeah, 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 like that's going to make your biceps really strong too in a stabilized fashion, but the second I curl my arm a lot, I'm going to lose a lot of that because that's a range of motion that's not, you know, there's not, there's not a ton of carryover into other ranges of motion. Mm-hmm. So it's important that you train all your muscles this way, including your core. And if you're a, if you're a strength athlete and you, and you're, all you're interested in is improving your squat and your deadlift, mark my words, start training your core through full range of motion and watch how much more stable you are when you do your lifts. But I will say this, when you wear a weight belt, there is a different way of activating your core to make you more stable in a weight belt. And it's literally the ability of, of your ability to push your core out against the weight belt to create stability. And there was an exercise that uh, Robert Ober showed us uh, called uh, fat, <laughs> fat, fat Girl, girl Press. Yeah, it's an yeah, unfortunate very- name. Uh, yeah, PC. Yeah, so it's called the Fat Girl Press. And Unfortunate. So what, I think that was hilarious. Yeah, so I, what, it's, it's, <laughs> of course. It's what they named it. And <laughs> what you do with this is you lay on your back with your knees bent and you put like a kettlebell or a weight on your midsection or like a heavy sandbag. It's probably the best thing, right? Sandbag. And you put it on your midsection so it's pressing down in your gut. And then what you do is you push out and try to lift the sandbag with your gut by pushing out against it. And what you're doing is you're training your core 
your core's ability to push out against resistance so that when you put your weight belt on, because he was telling us how important it is when you wear a weight belt to be able to really exert force against the weight belt to create mm-hmm. stability, which I, you know, I've oh, used a, a brilliant exercise. Yeah. Absolute brilliant exercise. So, tr- you know, all these different things are important to train your muscles in all the ranges of motion to make them most functional. So don't neglect, you know, that, that full range of motion for core. I mean, it makes a huge didn't difference. Didn't you, Sal, didn't you write an incredible white paper that was on flat tummies or a six pack abs and all the myths and the things that are, that are surrounded around? I it? did. I did. Some of the big myths are like high reps, you know, uh, for some reason it was sold a long time ago that you need to do high reps for your abs uh, because that's supposed to be better. Doug, yeah. can we put a link? Can we put a link inside the show notes so people can actually look at that white paper that Sal created? Oh, Jackie's here, by the way. Yeah. Hi, How you doing? So, uh, yeah, um, I, I did write that. But yeah, as far as you know, training the core is concerned, high reps are, uh, it's false. Um, the core builds like any of the muscle. The problem with low reps and your core is if you have bad control over your core and then you try to add resistance, you're asking for trouble. So learn how to really articulate the movement of the core and do that with body weight first. And trust me, if you do a physio ball crunch properly where you're fully extending, fully contracting, not many people need resistance. You know, even I do it when I'll extend my arms above my head so I create a long lever. Um, I, you know, I'll do like 15 reps and I'm getting, and, and it's decent, you know, resistance. Oh, yeah. uh, obliques too, man, train with heavy resistance on that rotation. And when you build that, that solid, you know, like I said, ar- it feels like armor. When your core is strong like that, it does feel like armor. When you go do your other lifts, you just feel like your mm. your spine is so protected because it's the other side of the you know the muscles that support the spine. It's not just the low back. It's, no, it's all those muscles. It's 29 different muscles that internally wrap around your spine all the way from the back, the side, and the front that I think people are neglecting. You know whose core uh, blows me away? Who? Uh, Paul Check. Yeah. Paul Check oh, has yeah. got. If you look at pictures of him, and his, you know, he's in his. Craig Craig's got a pretty heavy. nasty core on him too. He does. Yeah, yeah Craig's yeah. got a Craig nasty core on him because of all his way he trains. But quite che- the blocks. Paul Check would do physio ball crunches with a 120 pound dumbbell on his chest. Yeah, and which is it's silly and good form, like yeah. really good form, which is absolutely insane. So difficult. And you see how stable he is when he does like anything else. <laughs> Even if it's a Bulgarian squat, he can load, you know, 400 pounds to that or Dude, whatever. He went to, he was at the Onnit Academy and they were, he worked out with Kyle. So Kyle Kingsbury is a big, strong fucking dude, right? He's an ex pro MMA fighter, big, strong dude, like very muscular, very strong. Yeah. And Kyle told me that he worked out with Paul and they were doing uh, uh back step lunges with a mm-hmm. barbell. And he said they got up to 225 pounds, and Kyle was like, I can't do anymore. And Paul got it, went all the way up to 300 pounds. Yeah, it's crazy. He's 50 something years old, right? He's a savage. He's just an absolute machine, but part of that is his core. And if you talk to Paul about the secret to his strength, he'll tell you like his core was a big, and he was talking about this way before core strength became an important right, thing. Right. Mm-hmm. This was in the 80s and 90s when... He pretty much brought the physio ball into uh, the forefront. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it's... it. Lazy people said it wasn't necessary. Can you have a six-pack and not, never work out your abs? Yeah, if you get lean enough, you'll have it. Mm. Uh, can you squat heavy and deadlift heavy with a belt and never work out your abs? Yeah. But is it ideal? No. Like, if you want to develop an impressive midsection and you want good stability, work your core mm-hmm. in its full range of motion. If you build it, Sal will come. Next up, Lauren Bergman. Are fruits essential? I've never liked the taste and texture of fruit, but I'm told I'm missing vital nutrients and minerals. No. No, no, no. But you know what? This I would challenge this person to um, look into their current diet or the diet they've eaten over the last fucking 10 plus years of their life because I hated fruit. I didn't, you didn't like fruit? I hated fruit. And, but the reason why I hated the fruit was because I came out the womb eating sour patches and candy and donuts and ice uh, cream. And, and then I moved into, as I got older, artificial sweeteners. And I took artificial sweeteners like crazy. You got hijacked. Yeah. Early. So my, my palate is fucked when it comes to sugar and, and what sugar should taste like in its natural form. And so I would eat an apple, a banana, a strawberry, and it tastes fucking bland. 
It would taste like nothing. A banana and a strawberry taste the same to me. An apple, same to me. They all taste That's the same. That's crazy. Yeah, it really did. And I was not a fruit eater at all. And that was the reason that kept me from eating fruit. It wasn't until later in my career that I put it together that I was like, oh, shit. I have just completely hijacked my palate. Yeah. I've been oversaturating it with all this artificial sweeteners and regular sugar for so long that getting it in its natural source just doesn't appeal to me. Mm. So I would- What's your favorite now? Oh, my God, dude. I love all fruit now, you, man. You like kumquats? Yeah. Kumquats? Like, you never eat a kumquat? No, I missed You didn't know that? that? I missed that one. Yeah, yeah. kumquats. That's the name of it. It's an That's unfortunate, a, of course, yeah. unfortunate name of it. Of course, it would be your favorite. You got a lot of kumquats around yeah. the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, it would be your <laughs> favorite. I, you know what? I've been wanting to say kumquat for so yeah. long. I mean, I, I, I do a it's lot of- underrated fruit. Yeah. I do a lot of berries now, right? So I do blueberries and blackberries and raspberries and strawberries. I do that a lot. I mean, that's almost like a, a daily thing that I do. And then I eat bananas and apples occasionally. Um, but man, there's there's no Dude. fruit that I don't love now. I love all fruit now. Bro, but it was- I only like like apples and berries. Yeah. Like, I don't really get down with the mushy banana. You know, it's like a texture you like, thing. You like them to be hard. I like them hard. I don't like bananas don't by like themselves, but bananas fruit. complement no a lot of good fruit. smoothies and other dishes. I don't like eating bananas in public, but I do like bananas. Yeah. But so, you know, I treat fruit like uh, dessert. So for me, fruit is nature's dessert. It really is. And if right. you think about it, so here's an interesting thing that I learned the other day when we interviewed uh, Max, uh, Max uh, Lugavere. He, 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 and I looked this up. He's, he, was, he was right. Scientists think that humans' ability to see color evolved to be able to see fruit. Oh, wow. Yeah, the different colors of fruit. So like our ability, After that? Yeah, like our wow. ability to see color came from our, uh, evolving so that we could actually see fruit. Mm. And fruit is quite ingenious, actually. It's a way for a plant to, to spread its seeds. So what they do is they, they put their seeds and they, they pack the seeds in a sugar-filled, fiber-filled, colorful you know, fruit that humans would eat and then poop out the, the, the seed. Mm-hmm. The seed is now you know, encased in your poop, which is like fertilizer, and then boom. You well, isn't tree. color both an attractor and a deterrent, right? So in nature, you have like animals that have super, super vibrant colors that are the poisonous ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. That's a good point. Absolutely yeah. good point. No, fruit is not essential. So watch out. Uh, you could get all the nutrients and whatever you want from vegetables and meat, Um, but fruit is delicious. It does have some beneficial properties. There are certain polyphenols and, you know, flavonoids and stuff that are found in fruit that are really good. High in vitamin C, which, you know, is, uh, you know, hard to get in, in, in meat, uh, for example. Um, but I treat it like, uh, like dessert. So for me, I don't necessarily eat lots of processed desserts or, and stuff like that, but I do eat fruit. So if I'm going to have a dessert, it's typically some kind of a fruit dish and I may use honey. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's just a bowl of strawberries or grapes or, or melon, and then that's my, my candy. Fruit is a lot different today, by the way, than it was right, right. You know, thousands oh, yeah. of years ago. Yeah. We, we've actually bred fruit to be higher in sugar and lower in fiber. If you, if you go online, you can look up uh, old paintings like from the Ren- Renaissance era where they would paint like apples and, and watermelons and stuff, and they don't look like the ones we eat now. Like an apple is like, full of seeds like it'll, and they're small yeah. they're like crab apples they're small and they're full of seeds a banana full it's of like seeds a pomegranate either that or there's a lot of really shitty painters back then yeah <laughs> <They're> just <laughs> putting dots everywhere yeah big ass seeds inside yeah. there I think it's important though to note that um, it is a still a, one of the best sources of fiber and many clients that I had taken on that were dieting already or trying to eat well uh they, and if you're if you're not eating a lot of box shit, you don't eat bread, you don't eat pasta, you don't eat a lot of these things that actually have a lot of fiber uh, p- infused into them, right? When you go and you uh, eliminate or you have minimal fruit, your fiber intake tends to be really low. And you I get a lot from vegetables, yo, yeah. No, the amount of vegetables you have to eat to get the amount of fiber that you would need on a regular basis is really, really tough. You got to be now. If you were somebody who was eating four, six servings of vegetables every day, then absolutely you're yeah. right. Somebody who eats, I, you're the first person in my life I've ever met that eats a fucking giant a bowl. bowl of yeah. vegetables. Mm. Never seen anybody else do that. So you you need to know that you're very rare when mm. it comes to that. So special. Some people would say special. Rare yeah. bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. 
yeah, if you're someone like Sal, where you eat, you know, bowls full of fruit just as a meal, I mean, uh, vegetables as a meal, then yeah, you're probably not, you're probably, you don't have to worry. But many, many clients of mine, when I assess their diet, fiber is one of all, fiber and sugar are normally the two go-to things that I have to adjust on somebody's diet to help them out. And it always makes a huge difference. Like they'll be backed up for a couple days and not even really realize it. Not a lot of people realize that it's, it's probably pretty good that you shit every single day, at least once a day. And some people think that it's just normal to shit every few days and they don't understand why they feel all bloated and they look that way. And then you look at their diet and they're getting 10 to 15 grams of fiber every single day because they don't eat a lot of fruit. They don't eat as much vegetables as someone mm-hmm. like Sal does. And so all I have to do is add a, like a cup of berries a day into their, their diet. And they get that fiber, And then huh? boom, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. that fi- and all of a sudden they, they see them start to lean out. They stop holding all the water. They're not <clears throat> bloated. So <laughs> The fruit that I recommend people eat regularly is uh, avocado, which a lot of people don't realize avocado is a fruit. Um, so, but that doesn't, that's kind of different, right? Different category, right? Cause it's fat, fats and fiber. Yeah. Um, the other one that I, I typically would recommend to people, and this is for people with uh, high blood pressure is pomegranate. Pomegranate uh, is a good fruit to eat for, because it's got some, there's some compounds in there that naturally lower your, your or at least, uh, what's called, um, vasodilate. So they help open mm. and relax the blood vessels. Which lower bl- blood pressure? Well, nothing. You know, was, in, was that jackfruit that Ben Greenfield brought Gross. in? Gross. It was, it was I didn't think it was weird. that bad. I didn't think it, it was, was that weird. bad, actually. Yeah. Nothing. Is that the one that tastes like meat? Yeah. Or is that something else? No, it was kind of like a, yeah, it was kind of like a meaty cantaloupe. Yeah, know. it was. Yeah, it was thicker. It was like had a skin to it for sure. I thought it was all right. It wasn't there was that bad. A lot of health properties he was trying. I, to I don't think you that, can though. beat berries, in my opinion. I think I think blueberries ber- are like the berries. Highest. Yeah. So yeah. the the all berries, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, all have the. This is where you highest. get into the magical fruit zone, right? right? Where everything competes. Where blueberries trumps all of them, but then you know you're going to get acai, you're going to get goji. All these yeah. things come out of the woodworks. I, t- I teach clients berries, right? So at the end of the day, just target berries. They they are the lowest in calorie and sugar to raise ratio of fiber. Mm. So it, 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 most people that don't get enough fruit in their diet tend to lack in fiber. <clears throat> so if I'm trying to up their fiber, I encourage them to do berries because berries <clears throat> is going to do the least amount of calories, the least amount of sugar for the most amount of fiber. Yeah. So that's yeah I actually it, it, had a whole bowl last night, uh, blueberries with the coconut uh, whip. whipped cream. Yeah. Oh, that, so good. Dude, it's such that, a good dessert. That's a staple. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. That coconut whip is insane, and I think they're lying on the macros. There's they no have way. to be. It's so sweet. It's like five calories yeah, for a fucking like, table. Oh, How's that yum, possible? Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. You can eat like ice cream. It's, it's, yeah. how, that's, it's totally curbed that for me. Like I was a guy who ate ice cream, you guys know, every single night, and then I went to like frozen yogurt for a really long time, and the Cocoa Whip has been like a game changer for wow. me. So in, 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 in my family, and this is kind of a, a Mediterranean culture type of thing, at the end of dinner, we would always have, especially if you have guests over, like there's more, you know, we would have our three or four courses and then you would have um, nuts and fruit at the end, always at the end of dinner. Every, we would always bring mm. out, it was always some kind of a melon, uh, by the way. So it was like well, a cantaloupe or watermelon and then nuts. And so I've, I've grown up eating fruit after dinner for, you know, most of my life. Today I eat, like av- avocado is really the only fruit I eat every single day. And every once in a while I throw in berries. Next question is from <laughs> Paleo Practitioner. Do women crave more sweets than men? And if so, why? Is this hormonal? This is a little speculation here. Hmm. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you see in general that women crave more sweets than men do? I think I think chocolate is normal. And I think that dark chocolate is one of the best sources of iron. And I think when they're on their period and they lose a lot of their red blood. Or blitz, magnesium. Yep. And so mm-hmm. I think that uh, this is some, I used to be something there. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to recommend like dark chocolate or uh, foods that are really high in iron to my female clients during that time. So, uh, I think there I think there's some science to support it. I think there, it's something that I've practiced for a really long time with clients and it's helped them out. So I, I do, I believe so. Yeah. There's, there's, so I just pulled up a study that says that th- there actually was a study done on this and it shows that women do create, tend to crave more sweets, and they're blaming it on estradiol, which is a, a hormone that's much higher in women. Mm. Here's what I think. Now, in my experience as a trainer, training lots of clients, I have seen, uh, I could, I guess I could say women probably have more of an issue with sweets than men, but you know, I'm going to make some speculations as to why that may be the case. One, I think there's higher uh, pressures on women to diet than men. So guys don't really start watching their food intake until they start to get much older. Like, when you're a dude in high school, like you know, you, you you probably haven't been on a diet or anything like that, but a lot of girls have been because they're 
you know, they're advertised to and, you know, the importance of the visual for women and all that stuff. So I think there's those pressures and you know how it is psychologically, right? When you're told you can't have something, you tend to want, right. you know, more of it. So there's I, I that. Want the naughty stuff. Exactly. Yeah. There's that. Then there's the hormonal changes that women go through on a, uh, on a monthly basis. And I, I think people don't quite appreciate just how big of a shift in hormones that women go through every single month that men don't really experience at all. Like we don't experience this dramatic change in our hormone profile and that can cause changes in how we feel mm -hmm. and sometimes it causes women to feel kind of down and sweets do provide a temporary feeling of feeling better and so that may be also a reason why so i think it's the taboo and maybe the hormonal changes that create that you know that kind of that that stronger craving but you know when it comes to diet i'll tell you what though as a trainer i mean what do you think is it harder for you to get men to eat a certain way or women Man. man, men are hard yeah. for everything. Yeah, yeah, are, they're yeah. just stubborn. Yeah, men are fucktards, man. Men yeah. are just like they, <laughs> they get so <laughs> dang. Men are men are so stubborn because we think we know everything. So a, a, a man trying to tell another man how to work out, how to eat, how to do any of that stuff is always a challenge. Women at least are receptive. Like women, yeah. I feel like they want to get to the answer. They want to learn. They're more they're open. more prone to healthy mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Like they want to they want to be healthy. They want their family to be help, healthy. They're nurturing. You know, yeah. We're just like, <laughs> I've helped way more women. Than we men. just do stupid way shit. Way more women than men, yeah. for sure. No, it's true. It's true because it's so much harder to approach a man in the gym and, and you know help him out or whatever than it is to help a woman. Right. <clears throat> women tend to hire trainers at higher rates, not because they know less, but because they're more willing to ask for. And I think help. too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, hormonally, I'm sure there's a lot there. You know, as far as like comforting too, like as far as going through stress. Like I, I, I don't know. It's such a generic statement, but I, I have seen that like women a lot of times will eat food to comfort themselves, you know, more so like, I don't, I don't know many men. I, there's a lot of men that do that, but mm -hmm. I just know like as a general, you know, sort of a, a thing that I, I do see that a lot more in women. Yeah, it is. And, and, and there is that whole stereotype, right? That, you know, when a woman and a man go on a diet, the man's body tends to respond faster, mm -hmm. which it, which actually studies have shown that might actually be true. Now I think that has more to do with the fact that, men tend to carry more muscle on their body. So they may, they may get less of that metabolic adaptation where your metabolism slows down. And when I've worked with clients, the ones that have had the most difficulty getting their metabolism to heal tend to be women. It, it's not as hard with men. I don't know. Have you experienced that yeah. before? Oh, no. It's always easier to help a man with that <clears throat> stuff. See, it's easier to help a man with that because he's got, but he's also got testosterone on his side. He has a lot. He has all, most, for the most part, most guys have more lean body mass than girls do. Also, so. the, 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 you know, uh, female body evolved to uh, also have to, to carry another life. And so when you put a woman on a really strict diet and you cut her calories too low, um, her body wants yeah, to resist going against yeah, the natural tendency to, you know, prepare. Yeah. It wants to resist because it's, you know, whereas a man, it's, just, I would think it's there's, I would think there's something to support too, that while she's going through her, when she's ovulating and stuff like that, there's something biologically that is probably getting set off too to tell her that it's time to prepare your body for potentially something which may cause this well, desire well, too. Well, so check this out. So, um, you know, we always talk about mini bulks and mini cuts, right. And how much more effective it is to, if you're going to diet to go on a you know two week period of time or one week period of time in a calorie deficit and then to interrupt it with a few days of maintenance or surplus and then repeat so that you don't get that metabolic adaptation where your metabolism slows down and then on the flip side if you're trying to gain weight or gain muscle you go on a bulk but every once in a while throw in a fast or throw in some low calorie days so that you minimize the fat gain and, and maximize your body sensitivity to food. So Jessica, uh, my girlfriend has, she notices very strong changes in her appetite that, uh, correlate with her, her menses, right? So there's some times of the month where she's just fucking starving. And then there's other times of the month where she feels like she's fine without eating any food at all. And so we were having this conversation. She's always, it always pisses her off where she'll, you know, there'll be times where she's super hungry, got lots of cravings and she's trying not to eat certain things and it ends up where she'll have a binge or something like that and then she'll feel bad about herself. So she came up with this brilliant idea and she's like, you know, we talk about listening to our bodies. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to just listen to my body and I'm going to mini bulk when my body wants to eat and I'm going to mini cut when my body doesn't want to eat. And the way she does it is rather than when she's hungry, eating a bunch of food that isn't necessarily good for her, is she just eats more of the healthy stuff. So she'll eat more of the meat, more of the vegetables, more of the fruit, 
more of the whatever. And then when she's not that hungry, she just goes and she'll have days where she eats very little calories, where she'll eat like 800 calories. But then she'll, on some days, she'll eat like 2,500 calories. So I'm watching her do this over the, she's been doing this now for, I want to say three or four months. And her body's responding incredibly, like incredibly. She, when she's in that mini bulk period, her strength goes up and she gains lean body mass. She doesn't look like she gains body fat. And then when she goes down and drops everything, she just gets a little bit leaner. And she's, it's much easier for her because she's not fighting what she's feeling, where she has to, where she finds herself binging because she's fighting so much. And then, you know, that whole thing I talk about of that, that dictator where you're fighting it and then finally you rebel and then you eat a bunch of food and it's worked out really fucking well for her. Yeah, so it just takes that whole like listening to your body to another, you know, a whole nother level. And she started to track it and I don't know exactly what it is. She, she would have to communicate it. I think if you go on her Instagram, she's written about it, but uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, theory, right? I, and it is, but really challenging for the average person to probably put that together. And it's actually, taken her months because it's another level of intuitive eating. I mean, it's intuitive eating to a, a, the ninth degree now. I mean, yep. that's some ninja black belt shit. It's for taken the her like four person. months to kind of figure I, out. I teach Katrina to do this, like so. When she has these cravings where she wants to eat more, is I always tell her, like you know, if your body wants more food, like allow it to have more food, but then also make sure that your training is reflecting what you're doing calorically, right? So. So, it, so I like, will have a day where, you know, she, she'll tell me, and this just happened the other day. Like, she's like, man, I'm really craving a burger. And I'm like, cool. I'm like, well, what's, what are you, what's your training been looking like the last day or two? Like, what, did you hit the gym? Did you just walk? Did you do some light work? Did you squat? What are you doing like in your training? Did you get after it? And if she did, then I'm like, well, then shoot, your body right now probably wants to be fed and wants to build some muscle, like let it happen. <laughs> and then if she hasn't, I said, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we go train or let's let's save the burger night till tomorrow night after we get a good lift session in. And so we know that there's a good portion of them calories that are going to go to good work versus you over consuming when you really haven't put the work in for the knowing that. So that served, that served her really well. It served me really well during like off season of competing. That's kind of the thought process that I would always have is like, if my body is wanting more food, I want to feed it more food. But then I also want to make sure that I I'm putting in the work inside the gym yeah. so that it, some of those extra calories that I consume get prioritized to building muscle versus what happens to most people. See, most people have these cravings and it's because a lot of it is psychological, not just physical. Oh, most of it is. They're yeah. sedentary. They're not doing something. They're depressed. They're sad, or they're just like not feeling it today, so they want to eat. And it's like, if you only knew that those times, a lot of the time when you make that decision, it's not so much the food that is quote unquote bad. It's that you just bad timing on your part. Like yeah. you had the perfect storm. You've been sedentary all day. You didn't do right. shit. And then you go eat that. It's like, no, that wouldn't be good. It's not, it's rarely ever the day that you're motivated. You ate really, you ate three good meals already that day. You worked out really hard. You've been active. Like the, it, that promotes you wanting to stay good. But in reality, if you were going to go over consume or eat more food, that would be the time yeah. to do now, that. Now, even with that, you need to have a good amount of self-awareness because I could also see that being turned into something negative, right? Where I could punish well, myself in the gym. You know what I mean? Like, Well, oh, that or eat. you see what the, the bodybuilding community has done where they turn it into these binge and purge type of, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. oh, my cheat day. I get to go yeah. whatever I want. You or, know? or, so just, or just absolutely burn can. X amount of calories in order to eat this. Exactly. Or you punish know, yourself. Yeah, like, okay, I ate that burrito. Now I'm going to go beat the shit out of myself yeah, in the it gym. Becomes a well, this is why I never, I, I, I'm only mentioning it because I think you brought up a, an even higher level of intuitive eating. And I think what I just said is an even step before that because most people just honestly are not ready for any of that. Most people still have not learned to listen to their signals. Most people are not aware enough to know that is this really hunger or is this more psychological or can really evaluate their day like that. Most of us are so de detached from that that we just can't do that. So yeah. I think a good rule of thumb too is when you have, when you're hungry, you can eat more, but you can make good food choices while you do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, I'm hungry. I, I used to tell food. clients that all the time. Like, I, I, more dare, good I dare you to try and get fat on baked potatoes, chicken and steak and vegetables. Yeah. Like, go for it. Like, you're hungry. You're telling me you're hungry. Like, yeah. eat it. Eat those things all day long. Like, see if you get see if you get fat on that. Most people, you'll get palate fatigue before you get fat. So I do, I do this with my kids. So they'll be sitting there watching TV and my, my, you know, my kid will be like, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. And I'll be like, okay, cool. We have... You know, some dinner from last night that I can warm up for you. I have a cheese stick, or you can have some fruit. No, I don't want that. I want it. I'm like, well, well you're like not really hungry. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you're not actually yeah. hungry. If you're really hungry, then you'll want to eat those types of foods. What you're talking about is a craving, which is really not is really not hunger. So you can say I have a craving, right. but don't say you're hungry. I'm trying to teach them the, the difference between the two. That's good. Next question is from Ray Ray Health. Is it okay to hit 
on a guy at the gym, not using a cheesy pickup line. It's here's the thing about the here's the cool thing about being a woman. If is this a woman or is this a guy? This Ray, a oh. this was a woman. Oh, okay, this is a, this is Ray wanting to pick up on yeah. another guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if they're wearing tights, yeah, go for it. I was yeah. like, dude, yeah. so easy, bro. Just yeah. go yeah. up behind him when he's squatting and spot him, bro. <laughs> That's it, no, bro. You're, you're already halfway there at that point. Tight, bro. <laughs> here's yeah. the thing: if if you're a woman, it's probably almost always okay to hit on a guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, never, it's never a bad time. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, and the thing, I mean, it happens so rare anyway. It does. And it, the thing is that this is why it's, or almost, do you look hella thirsty as a chick doing that? You know yeah. what? But this is what I mean by that. Like it depends. Like if you're a man and you want to hit on a girl, you, there's, you have to be very careful because if you come across in any way threatening, it's never going to be good. Like that, that's always bad. Right. So you have to be careful. Women almost never come across as threatening to a man. Only one time in my life did I ever feel threatened by a woman yeah. hitting on me. And uh, it was funny because it was a paradigm shattering moment. This is when I had that woman who worked out of my gym. I remember Who this. followed me down the hallway and then cornered me and was like trying to talk about my, my, my balls. Mm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's in an old episode. You might have to search for that one. <laughs> um, but Classic. yeah, yeah. He just, just go hit on him. Tell him, tell him you think he's hot or something like that and talk to him. So easy. Like. God, guys are so easy to pick up on. It's got to be the most insane thing. I know. I, you know, I, I think we put so much pressure. People that always ask these questions, I think, put so much pressure on this whole, like, how do I get you? I, I feel like the more you try, the harder you work at these things, the worse it is for you. I think at the end of the day, if you like somebody, the best possible thing you can do is start a conversation with them. Like, it does not need to be like this. I was never a guy with like a, 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 a Rolodex of like fucking objective. Pick, no, a Rolodex of pickup lines that I would just use. I was just always myself. Now, I think, and I think as you get comfortable doing that and just going up talking to strangers and introducing yourself, you get smoother and you, and you, and you start to get responses from certain things that you say. And then you, and it kind of formulates into what I think some people think are lines or shit that you say. I'm sure if you were to unpack, all the things that I've said to a female for the first time, we sp- I'm sure they probably sound like lines to somebody, but I didn't go into it like, I'm going to walk over to this girl and I'm going to spit this line. Like, I'm going to go talk to this girl. I'm going to keep talking to these people that I like mm-hmm. or these people I want to communicate. And over time, like, I'll say different things that are funny or that get, and I think you start to learn what that 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 is. And so then it gets more comfortable and it gets easier for you to do this. I think going into this, like, and putting so much pressure around can I? Can I not? What do you say? What do you yeah. not say? It's like fucking say hi. Like, well, I think, what do you say yeah, next to another you lead human with that? Right? You lead with just like a, a normal conversation of hi, hello. You know, your name. You're trying to get to know them, and then you start being receptive to their body language immediately. That's yeah. how you know like whether you got a chance or not. You yeah. Know? yeah, it's yeah, like they're, they're gonna reveal that like pretty quickly. Right? If she doesn't like, if if he or he doesn't like completely even take his headphones off to the yeah, like, like, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, cool it's the, story. Not making eye contact. Like, <laughs> yeah. get your high in and then walk away and then try another. Day. Yeah, you'll hi. know if he's short. You right. know what I mean? I've gotten hit on in the gym by a girl, and I have my, you know, and then I'll just real short with her, like, okay, yes, no, whatever, and then do my set. But right. It's, you that, get, it's that wife beater, bro. Yeah, it's that's oh, what it man. is. Do you, what's the, they love that shit. Which, like flies. They Dude, love that shit. Dude, <laughs> one time, one time, this was crazy. Was, All over it. One time I was working out, and I was doing, uh, like, Roman chair sit-ups, and this girl walks up to me, and no joke, she she grabs my. I did have a wife beater on, fuckers. <laughs> she, <laughs> of course she, she did. She grabbed it. To your she body. walks up to me, and I'm like, huh? And you don't expect someone to kind of walk up to you looking at you like that. So I'm like, what's going on? She pulls up my wife beater and like rubs her hand on my nice. on my stomach, and she's like, nice abs. Wow. I have never been hit on like that in my That's entire aggressive. life. Yeah. If you guys Girl, if you have any story like that, girls can do that. I've oh had my God. butt grabbed quite a few times. No, in the gym. In the gym and at a restaurant. <laughs> the restaurant the most. It was weird. Just as a server? Well, no, like some, I've had managers and I've had other staff. You had a manager grab your butt? Yeah. Oh yeah. She was aggressive too. No way. She tried to like pull me into the, um, the, the freezer and make out. And it was like my manager. What'd you do? I I was like, yeah, I I think I was just scared and (laughs) it's just kind of did the magician. I magicianed my way out of it. No, I know. I didn't like her. I mean, I would, I was like debating it, you know, but at that time I was like, I was so like professional about everything, you know. I didn't even <laughs> think about like messing around or doing stuff like at my job, you know. Like uh, all that stuff kind of went over my head, and then later I realized, like, oh wow, she was, you know, she was trying to go for it. You oh know? man, what about you? What Adam? if I did? <laughs> you know, Adam, you got any stories? Uh, you know what? I what I I got a lot of like Justin. I was really professional 
And, and you never had a girl come up to you and like I have had yeah I've had all that I've had a girl yeah. grab my ass I've had a girl rub my stomach I've had a girl rub my chest I've had girls take off their top when I'm going to go do their body fat like they need to take their bra off right. and their shirt yeah, off I've for me to do oh that. my god yeah, yeah. Like, so oh, I've had, take my picture dude that like, happened to me yeah. where did all your clothes go <laughs> that happened but to I, me I, you know I early on I right away like I was 20 years old when I got in the gym industry and when I was working with other trainers and I was so I was the young one I was also a virgin right so. I was a good boy, hmm. and I right away, one of the, it was very easy for me to connect how many of these trainers just were fucking everybody in the gym or wanted to fuck everybody in the gym. Like, yeah, it was a it, lot of that. that was like, it was like, make some money, train clients, and try and sleep with as many hot girls as you could. And I really, I put it together really quick, the ones that were super professional, how much they separated themselves, and it was something that I- 100%. So I- went out of my and, and then it was it ended up being a strength of mine because I, I did get girls that hit on me I did have options and opportunity like that I did get a lot of really good looking women that I got the opportunity to train but because I kept myself so professional I think that was a lot of my success had to do that because I wasn't the best trainer but I was really professional and I did give a lot of good information that I could to my clients Dude, gyms are those like, are the best clients because yeah. you don't give them you don't give it to right them. right no I, I, you know? I'll be the and first like, to transition I, I, like, huh? I had I had female clients that 100% I openly told me they wanted to sleep with me that train with me for years because yeah. I didn't and I know that I'm not stupid yeah. it's like I've already taught this girl everything I know she's been with me for a year three days a week like you don't need any more information from me like that you know what I'm saying but I know in the back of her mind she's there's probably hope for that to happen I'm not stupid but I don't play into it and I continue yeah. to be professional and then I'm sure she keeps hanging around hoping that it's going to happen God, one day, you, so. you just made me re you just reminded yeah. me when I was 18 one of my first clients it terrified the shit out of me it was this young woman so she's probably in her <laughs> 20s and I do go to do her body fat and she had a, a like a dress on and so she's like can you test my body fat I said yeah I need to test over and she just lifted her dress up and she had nothing on <laughs> underneath <laughs> terrified the shit out of me uh, as a kid I was wow. very very frightened from that that was frightening it's great memories well I'm an 18 year old kid she's in her mid 20s I'd never seen a like, girl never did that I've never seen a vagina <laughs> Yeah. Just didn't know what to do. I've never oh. seen a vagina. She had a penis. <laughs> scared, scared the hell wow. out of me. That would scare the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> These days, yeah. Wasn't maybe. expecting that one. Uh, I don't know what right. to do with that. Justin ended up marrying his client. So. I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so after after the same thing? I pulled that move. Dude, but I fired her as a client beforehand. So, yeah, I at least pulled that Did move. you actually tell her I can't train you anymore because I want to date you? I did that. I didn't say I wanted to date you, but I said I can't train you anymore. Like, this is getting kind of unprofessional. And then I passed her off to a trainer that. That uh, uh, th this girl trainer that I was friends with, and I was like, you know, hey, you know, like, like give me updates and whatnot. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I kept her close, but yeah, no, I, I, God, I knew I right you. away I was going to be unprofessional, and I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, I love it's going to ruin my brand. Yeah. Love your integrity. I, that was the exact yeah. same way. I did this girl Kelly, who ended up living with me for two years. That I really liked. The first appointment I had with her, we ended up going for like I didn't have a client after, so we ended up going for like two hours, and we're just talking and talking and talking and i right away i was like man i really like this girl and i told her and the very the first fitness appointment I said hey you know i know we're scheduled to do another one because back then you used to have a fit one fit two yeah, right yeah. i said i'm actually gonna book it with another trainer and i know you're already interested in training if you do get training then i'll set you up with one of my best trainers that work here and she's like what i want you and stuff. i said no I, I like you i want to date you like and so we can't yeah. train together and she's like floored right away of course i got the date though after that I'm like oh. so i i think it's i think it was uh, a lot of but my you sold her training yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got all the commission yeah, on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. still business first. Yeah, yeah. Sixty Excellent. section yeah, yeah. Yeah. session pop. Such great integrity <laughs> yeah. in this room. You know, Love it. listen. Go to your app store. Get the Mind Pump Media app. It's absolutely for free. It allows you to search for topics in our seven hundred plus episodes. So if you want to look up like fat burning, you want to look up ab training, you want to look up metabolic damage, whatever, just type it in the top. It'll pull up all the episodes we talk about those things, and it's free. Go get it. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources 
at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.